Good morning. Uh, my name is Raj Prasad. I'm a professor of urology in Bristol, uh, and my special interest is in prostate cancer and its diagnosis. So uh, many of you will appreciate that prostate cancer is a very common health problem. It is probably now the most common cancer diagnosed worldwide amongst men. Nevertheless, you will also be aware that not all prostate cancers need to be treated and certainly don't need to be treated aggressively. And the importance for the urologist is in how to determine A, to determine A, that you have a prostate cancer and B, that it requires treatment. The test that we have used to date and it's true to say that although it is imperfect in, any, in many ways, is still relied upon by urologists, is the PSA, prostate specific antigen. This is a protein secreted by the prostate and is elevated in prostate cancer. The problem, it's elevate, problem is that it's elevated in other conditions of the prostate, including benign enlargement, prostatic inflammation and prostatic infection. As such, then, it does not make it the ideal tool. And as many point out, it is not in, used in screening because it's not specific enough or sensitive enough, i.e. there are many false positives and many false negatives that might lead to unnecessary biopsies and unnecessary um, uh, other investigations. So PSA, I'd say, stands for please select appropriately. So the, the current pathway as it stands in the UK is that a man may have a PSA checked. And of course, it's highly advisable if you are in uh, ethnic subgroups with a high incidence of prostate cancer, or if there's a strong family history of breast or prostate cancer, you might get your PSA reading as saying it is elevated for your age, the so-called age specific. PSA elevation. You will then be referred at your choice to the urological specialist who will arrange an MRI scan of your prostate. And if the MRI shows worrying areas of the prostate, you will then be offered a prostate biopsy. Now, given what I've said about PSA not being perfect, you will see that many people with elevated PSAs actually have this not due to prostate cancer. Likewise, many people in the so-called normal range between 1.3 and 3, where they would not be referred for further investigation, actually do have prostate cancer. So what I'm here to talk to you about is a new test called the Stockholm 3, which I would summarize as saying, gives you a greater refinement of the PSA test so that we can home in on those who truly need to have an MRI and truly need to have a biopsy. So what is this uh, Stockholm 3 test that's uh, quite rapidly being adopted in many uh, of, the, uh, of the Western uh, world nations like Norway, Sweden, Finland, Germany, and Switzerland, all of whom have good prostate cancer uh, treatments and approaches to the management of prostate cancer. What's going on? Why is it, what, what's special about it? Well, it's, <clears throat> it not only includes, it's, it's a blood test, and it not only includes the PSA, but it measures three other important relevant protein markers, as well as 101 genetic markers called SNPs, or for, for, for expanding that, single nucleotide polymorphisms. These are our fancy bits in your DNA that help us in this test to arrive at a prostate cancer risk. So if you combine the protein markers, the PSA, and the SNPs, genetic markers, you come out with a fabulous test which when combined with your background factors of ethnicity and family history, give you an incredibly accurate risk 
of whether you have prostate cancer or not. This will arm you with the ability to make your own choice about whether you wish to go forward for MRI scan, aided with the advice uh, of your urologist. And uh, furthermore, at a later stage, it might give us even more information taken in conjunction with the MRI about what the likelihood of biopsy positive disease is. This, this test has actually been validated quite strictly and robustly in over 75,000 uh, men. So in summary, we will pick up more cases of clinically relevant cancers that need to be treated for patient benefit in the PSA range, which is not normally treated as referable for further investigation. And we will also pick up what we call are the false positives, the ones where your PSA is elevated for your age specific level, but where cancer is less than likely to be found. Yet to date, you will still be going forward for investigation with MRI and biopsy. I think that's about it for now. And uh, I look forward to embracing this test as quite a significant advancement in the diagnosis and the appropriate diagnosis of appropriately at risk patients who need treatment, whilst enabling those who don't need treatment to rest assured and not undergo biopsy and unnecessary stressful investigations. Thank you.